What's up guys? This is Pro Warriors. In this video, we will learn how to play PlayStation 2 games on your Android device with the help of the PPSS22 emulator. Guys, I am not kidding, and this is definitely not clickbait. You can clearly see that I am playing PS2 games on my Android device. For your kind information, this emulator does not require any BIOS files, so it's quite easy to set up. I am going to guide you on how to set up the PPSS22 emulator, adjust settings and configurations, customize controls, and add PS2 games to the PPSS22 emulator. It's a complete tutorial, so watch the full video carefully. Please like and subscribe to our channel, and do not forget to hit the bell button. The PPSS22 emulator is a modified version of EtherSX2. Unfortunately, EtherSX2 is no longer accessible. Another popular PS2 emulator, NetherSX2, can be challenging to manage. But the good news is that PPSS22 is available on the Google Play Store, and it doesn't require PlayStation 2 BIOS, which is really hard to manage. You just need PlayStation 2 games that you have obtained legally. Simply download PPSS22 from the Google Play Store, then launch the app. When you first open the interface of this emulator, it is very simple and straightforward. Just click on Select PS2 ISO. It will then ask you to install a plugin. I don't know why they didn't include it, but never mind. Install the plugin and then again click on Select PS2 ISO. Now navigate to your internal storage and select the PS2 game. It will immediately run the game. For your kind information, PPSS22 directly supports ISO format, while EtherSX2 and NetherSX2 support CHD format. You can see PPSS22 running PS2 games very smoothly in native resolution. However, this emulator has one downside. It contains ads. To get rid of unwanted disturbances, you can turn off Wi-Fi or cellular internet connection. Let's do some configuration because the native settings are not optimized. Just click on the pause button here, and you will see some features like save state, load state, toggle frame limiter, toggle software, etc. at the top right corner. Here you will also find the settings and controls options. In the general settings, enable expand to cutout area to ensure the maximum screen area is utilized. Set the emulation screen orientation to landscape, and disable show notifications. If you want to monitor gaming performance, you can enable Show VPS, Speed, and Resolution. Let's move to the System tab. Here, select Maximum Overclock and disable the frame limit. In the Graphics tab, you have popular renderers Vulkan and OpenGL. I prefer to use Vulkan. The upscale multiplier will increase screen resolution. You can go up to 6x, but I suggest using 2x. Set the Aspect Ratio to Stretch Fill Screen. Enable Host VSync. Set the VSync queue size to 3 frames. For blending accuracy, choose Ultra and set the CRC fix level to Aggressive. Do not change anything in the Audio tab. Now let's configure the Controls menu. Set Dual Analog Pad in the touchscreen controller view. You can add or move buttons, reposition buttons, and scale them up or down. You can also customize the opacity of the keys. I tested several games on PPSS22 and the performance was quite impressive. Resident Evil 4 ran smoothly with frame rates between 45 to 55 FPS, while God of War 2 maintained a steady 40 to 50 FPS. Tekken 3 performed well at 40 to 45 FPS, and Tomb Raider 3 delivered a consistent 60 frames per second. Lastly, PES eFootball ran without any noticeable issues, providing a great gaming experience. That's it. If you want to watch something like this, please like and subscribe to our channel. Join our Discord server for any type of help. See you in the next video. Take care.